Chapter 7.10 Siemens Gamma KNX Touch Control TC5 General Temperature Control The General Temperature Controller of the TC5 handles the usual control options. This means switching or proportional control variables, monovalent, only heating, only cooling, and bivalent, both options available, up to three-stage fan control, one bit or one byte as control variables. The operating mode can be set via one byte object DPT20.102 as well as via the four times one bit objects for the four operating modes, which were used more frequently in the past. Automatic switching between heating and cooling mode is not available. This must be done manually by the user at the panel or we are the corresponding object control mode externally. Window contacts are also not taken into account at the moment. If you want to integrate them, this must also be done externally by activating the building protection mode when the windows are open. From the many options I pick out here the bivalent proportional PI control, that is the option that both a heating and a cooling circuit are controlled separately. First, I create again a new page in the parameters. The function page 6. Assign the appropriate heading, temperature office, and page function, general temperature control. This page is included as a third call on the main page 1. On the new function page, I define the internal sensor as the actual value to be controlled. The controller should be basically bivalent active, so the following settings must be checked or set. Behavior after download – on. Behavior at voltage recovery – on. Control mode – heating and cooling. Behavior after voltage recovery – as before failure. System type – four pipes. Next come the room operation modes. They are to be used. Alternatively, direct set point adjustment without operating modes would be possible. So, we activate the operating modes using the nowadays common one byte data type 20.102. Their status is also to be activated. When the voltage returns, the controller then needs a start mode. We can take standby for this. The extended comfort mode is activated with 30 minutes. This means that the controller remains in comfort mode only for the set time, but then switches back to echo mode if it was previously switched to comfort mode coming directly from this mode. If it has been switched to comfort mode via protection or standby mode, this timer does not apply. Finally, we can still adjust the setpoint range, but be careful. The restrictions made here apply to all possible operating modes. For example, a lower limit of 12 degrees would also raise the setpoint for protection mode to just this 12 degrees. Therefore, I leave it at the basic setting of 5 to 40 degrees centigrade. This is followed by the setpoint parameterization on the temperature setpoint page. The first decision to be made is whether I want to go via base setpoint and offset or instead always set absolute setpoints. With absolute setting, each of the eight setpoints can be reset directly on the touch panel. There can also be overlaps if you are not careful. That's why I choose the well-tried method base setpoint plus shift here. In this setting, the user can then readjust all normal operating modes at once during operation, always with the parameterized spacing. The setpoints for the building protection mode can be set individually in each case. I will then show this live after commissioning. Back to the settings. The values of the setpoint offset visible here are standard. 2 Kelvin offset each for standby, 
and 4 Kelvin offset each for echo mode. Nothing needs to be changed here. The last step is to enter or check the parameters for the control itself. As mentioned at the beginning, we set the continuous PI control via 8-bit telegrams for the command type. The control value remains direct. It could also be inverted if required, depending on the actuator. The PI control parameters can be set separately for heating and cooling. There are four preset pairs of coefficients for certain types of heating. But experience shows that the values I enter here are more suitable, even for underfloor heating. If you want to know exactly what these two parameters do, you can learn about them in the KNX Advanced course or in the KNX HVAC Specialist course, both certified KNX courses with exam. So I set the p-value to 40, which corresponds to 4 Kelvin, and the i-value to 30 minutes. Nevertheless, a brief explanation of these two coefficients. A PI control works like this. If there is a change in the control difference, difference between the set point and the actual value, the first thing that happens immediately is an adjustment of the control variable in proportion to the change to the p factor. Thus, if the control difference changes by 2 Kelvin with a p factor of 4 Kelvin, then the valve is immediately opened further by 50% or closed depending on the sign of the change. Thus, the energy input into the room now gradually changes and the control difference becomes smaller. The I coefficient now amplifies the change in the actuator, so that the desired state, namely set point equals actual value, is reached more quickly. The effect of the I coefficient can be simply imagined like this. What the P coefficient does immediately, the I coefficient does again within the set time, here 30 minutes, in the same amount but only if the control difference does not change. In our example, the actuator would then be 100% further open after 30 minutes, or completely closed, depending on the sign of the change. We now come back to our TC5 and still have to deal with the group objects. Basically, it is very simple. Since the controller can act completely autonomously, it only needs the two control variable objects, here 179 control value heating and 180 control value cooling. However, since room controllers in KNX systems are very often controlled remotely, and I would like to see the results of this remote control, I have also linked the other nine objects. The TC5 is now downloaded once more. Now to the test. First in the group monitor of ETS. Condition for test start. The controller is in heating mode, standby. The effective set point corresponds to the actual temperature value. The control variable is still zero. Now I change the operating mode to comfort. You can see that the effective set point value changes by plus two Kelvin. At the same time, the control value jumps to 57%. Now comes a time-lapse recording. After approximately 6 minutes, the control value is at 99%. Now I adjust the actual value via the corresponding correction object. The actual temperature is now equal to the set point again. The controller now shows exactly the expected opposite behavior. It jumps back from 99% to 49%. On the TC5 display, the operation looks less spectacular because no control variables are shown. However, one can always see the currently measured actual value as well as the currently set mode dependent effective set point and can thus also consider 
what the controller is doing with it. If I now call up the operating modes in each case, one sees the reset point in the display. If I change that reset point, all other five values from the normal range are also changed. Only building protection, heating and cooling are to be set separately.